Long, long ago, there lived on the island of Sicily two young men named Damon and Pythias. They were known far and wide for the strong friendship each had for the other. Their names have come down to our own times to mean true friendship. You may hear it said of two persons. Those two? Why, they're like Damon and Pythias. The king of the country was a cruel tyrant. He made cruel laws and he showed no mercy towards anyone who broke his laws. Now, you might very well wonder. Why the people did not rebel? Well, the people didn't dare rebel because they feared the king's powerful and great army. No one did say a word against the king or his law, except Damon and Pythias. Speaking against a new law, the king had... Ho, oh, there! Who are you that dare to speak so about our king? I am called Pythias. Don't you know it is a crime to speak against the king or his laws? You are under arrest. Come and tell this opinion of yours to the king's face. When Pythias was brought before the king, he showed no fear. He stood straight and quiet before the throne. So, Pythias, they tell me you do not approve of the laws I make. I am not alone, your majesty, in thinking your laws are cruel. But you rule the people with such an iron hand that they dare not complain. But you have the daring to complain for them. Have they appointed you their complaint? No, your majesty. I speak for myself alone, I have no wish to make trouble for anyone. But I am not afraid to tell you that the people are suffering under your rule. They want to have a voice in making the laws for themselves. You do not allow them to speak up for themselves. In other words, you are calling me a tyrant. Well, you shall learn for yourself how a tyrant treats a rebel. Soldier. Throw this man into prison. At once, your majesty. Don't try to resist, Pythias. I know better than to try to resist a soldier of the king. And for how long I am to remain in prison, your majesty, merely for speaking out for the people? Not for very long, Pythias. Two weeks from today at noon, you shall be put to death in the public square as an example to anyone else who may dare to question my laws or acts. Off to prison with him, soldier. When Damon heard that his friend Pythias had been thrown into prison and about the severe punishment that was to follow, he was heartbroken. He rushed to the prison and persuaded the guard to let him speak to his friend. Oh, Pythias, how terrible to find you here. I wish I could do something to save you. Nothing can save me, Damon, my dear friend. I am prepared to die. But there is one thought that troubles me greatly. What is it? I will do anything to help you. I'm worried about what will happen to my mother and my sister when I'm gone. I'll take care of them, Pythias, as if they were my own mother and sister. Thank you, Damon. I have money to leave them. But there are other things I must arrange. If only I could go see them before I die. But they live two days journey from here, you know. I'll go to the king and beg him to give you your freedom for a few days. You'll give your word to return at the end of that time. Everyone in Sickly knows you for a man who has never broken his words. Do you believe for one moment that the Ling would let me leave this prison, no matter how good my words may have been all my life? I'll tell him that I shall take your place in the prison cell. I'll tell him that if you do not return by the appointed day, he may kill me in your place. No, no, Damon. You must not do such a foolish thing. I cannot, I will not let you do this. Damon. Damon. Don't go. Your Majesty. I beg of you. Let Pythias go home for a few days to bid farewell to his mother and sister. He gives his word that he will return at your appointed time. Everyone knows that his word can be trusted. In ordinary buis in his affairs perhaps. But he is now a man under sentence of death. To free him even for a few days would strain his honesty any man's honesty too far. 
Pythias would never return here. I consider him a traitor, but I'm certain he's no fool. Your Majesty. I will take his place in the prison until he comes back. If he does not return, then you may take my life in his place. What did you say, Damon? I'm so certain of Pythias that I am offering to die in his place if he fails to return on time. I can't believe you mean it. I do mean it, Your Majesty. You make me very curious, Damon, so curious that I am willing to put you and Pythias to the test. This exchange of prisoners will be made. But Pythias must be back two weeks from today, at noon. Thank you, Your Majesty. The order with my official seal shall go by your own hand, Damon, but I warn you, if your friend does not return on time, you shall surely die in his place. I shall show no mercy. Pythias did not like the king's bargain with Damon. He did not like to leave his friend in prison with the chance that he might lose his life if something went wrong. But at last, Damon persuaded him to leave, and Pythias set out for his home. More than a week went by, the day set for the death sentence drew near. Pythias did not return. Everyone in the city knew of the condition on which the king had permitted Pythias to go home. Everywhere people met, the talk was sure to turn to the two friends. Do you suppose Pythias will come back? Why should he stick his head under the king's axe once he has escaped? Still would an honorable man like Pythias let such a good friend die for him? There is no telling what a man will do when it's a question of his own life against another's. But if Pythias does not come back before the time is up, he will be killing his friend. Well, there is still a few days time. I, for one, am certain that Pythias will return in time. And I am just as certain that he will not. Friendship is friendship, but a man's own life is something stronger. I say. Two days before the time was up, the king himself visited Damon in his prison cell. You see now? Damon, that you were a fool to make this bargain. Your friend has tricked you. He will not come back here to be killed. He has deserted you. I have faith in my friend. I know he will return. We shall. Meanwhile, when Pythias reached the home of his family, he arranged his business affairs so that his mother and sister would be able to live comfortably for the rest of their years. Then he said a last farewell to them before starting back to the city. Pythias, it will take you two days to get back. Stay another day, I beg you. I dare not stay longer, mother. Remember, Damon is locked up in my prison cell while I am gone. Please do not weep for me. My death may help bring better days for all our people. So, Pythias began his journey in plenty of time, but bad luck struck him on the very first day. At twilight, as he walked along a lonely stretch of woodland, a rough voice called. Not so fast there, young man. Stop! Oh, what is it? What do you want? Your money bags. My money bags? I have only this small bag of coins. I shall need them for some favors, perhaps, before I die. What do you mean, before you die? We do not mean to kill you, only take your money. I'll give you my money. Only don't delay me any longer. I am to die by the king's order three days from now. If I don't return on time, my friend must die in my place. A likely story. What man would be fool enough to go back to prison ready to die? And what man would be fool enough to die for you? We'll take your money, alright. And we'll tie you up while we get away. No, no! I must get back to free my friend. 
I must go back. But the two robbers took Pettis' money, tied him to a tree, and went off as fast as they could. Pettis struggled to free himself. He cried out for a long time, but no one traveled through that lonesome woodland after dark. The sun had been up for many hours before he finally managed to free himself from the ropes that had tied him to the tree. He lay on the ground, hardly able to breathe. After a while, Pettius got to his feet. Weak and dizzy from hunger and thirst and his struggle to free himself, he set off again. Day and night he traveled without stopping, desperately trying to reach the city in time to save Damon's life. On the last day, half an hour before noon, Damon's hands were tied behind his back and he was taken into the public square. The people muttered angrily as Damon was led in by the jailer. Then the king entered and seated himself on a high platform. Long live the king. The longer he lives, the more miserable our lives will be. Well, Damon, your lifetime is nearly up. Where is your good friend Pythias now? I have faith in my friend. If he has not returned, I am certain it is through no fault of his own. The sun is almost overhead. The shadow is almost at our H.E. noon mark. And still your friend has not returned to give back your life. I am ready and happy to die in his place. And you shall, Damon. Jailer, lead the prisoner to the... Look, it is Pythias. Pythias has come back. Let me through. Damon. Pythias. Thanks the gods I am not too late. I would have died for you gladly, my friend. Set them free. Set them both free. Set them free. Set them both free. Pythias, what made you take so long? A bit more delay and your friend would have been executed. Your Majest, I would have been here in the morning but for these two robbers. Robbers? What robbers? Two robbers intercepted me last evening on my way here. They took the money bag from me and tied me up to a tree despite my begging to let me go. How did you manage to untie yourself? Your Majesty. I struggled the whole night to untie myself. Luckily, one knot got loosened and I was able to untie it. I shall see to it that those robbers are caught and punished. They nearly killed an innocent man. Set them free. Set them both free. Set them free. Set them both free. People of the city. Never in all my life have I seen such faith and friendship, such loyalty between men. There are many among you who call me harsh and cruel. But I cannot kill any man who proves such strong and true friendship for another. Damon and Pythias, I set you both free. I am king. I command a great army. I have stores of gold and precious jewels. But I would give all my money and power for one friend like Damon or Pythias.